The PureFlow 3000 range of PAPRs are a new breed of industry-leading, all-in-one powered air purifying respirators, approved for use in light to medium industrial applications. The PureFlow 3000 PAPR range includes the following variants. Hard hat, hard hat and welding ADF lens, skeletal frame with lightweight hood, skeletal frame with open visor, the PureFlow 3000 is an all-in-one head-mounted PAPR, approved for respiratory use, head, eye, and face protection, with optional hearing protection available. The head-mounted design of the PureFlow 3000 means there is no hose or waste-mounted unit. This prevents the risk of snagging and enhances user comfort and mobility in the workplace. The unit does not require face fit testing prior to use and can be worn with facial hair and or spectacles. To ensure optimum performance, this video will outline the basic instructions for the proper use and maintenance of the PureFlow 3000. The PureFlow 3000 is an out-of-the-box solution, meaning you can be ready for work within minutes. In the box you will find powered air purifying respirator with ADF lens, HEPA filter, spark arrester, two rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, battery charger and mains cable, pack of three cleaning plugs, ear defender infill caps, user manual. Now that you've unpacked your respirator, we need to set it up ready for use. To charge the battery pack, insert the power cable into the charger and then into the power supply. Then insert the battery into the charging slot, ensuring it clicks fully into place. There are four LED battery indicators LED1 flashing red indicates the temperature is too low or too high for charging, or that the battery has failed. When LED1 is solid red, the battery is charging. As the battery charges, LED2, 3, and 4 will light sequentially solid green until fully charged. If LED1 flashes red and LED4 flashes green at the same time, the battery has failed. To install a fully charged battery, insert the battery into the battery housing until it clicks fully into position. To install a new HEPA filter, remove the filter housing by pressing either the left or right latch on the back of the unit. If spark arrester and or pre-filter is to be used, ensure this is positioned inside the filter housing prior to fitting the HEPA filter. Place the HEPA filter into the rear of the filter housing ensuring the filter label faces upwards as worn. Then applying firm pressure, click to engage the filter housing with the two filter latches as shown. After fitting the filter, check that the air inlet is clean and free from any obstructions. If not using ear defenders, Insert the ear defender infill caps into each side of the unit as shown. If using PureFlow ear defenders, push into each side of the unit until they click into place. After proper fitting adjustments, the respirator is now ready to use. For maximum comfort, it's important to take time to ensure your respirator fits correctly before use. To do this, we will carry out the following checks. Crown strap adjustment, headband adjustment, face seal fitting. To adjust the crown strap for optimal height, release the headband mounts from the four attachment posts in the respirator frame by pressing the release clip. Detach the face seal press fasteners from each side on the front of the respirator. Unfasten and remove the crown pad to access the adjustment straps. Adjust the length of the strap as required, ensuring that the four location pegs are within the highlighted range of adjustment. This position will ensure correct head ventilation for the product. If fitted correctly, the headband should fit securely on the brow, just above the eye line. After adjustment, reposition the crown pad on the headband strap. 
reattach the headband to the frame in reverse order, making sure it is locked into position. Reattach the face seal press fasteners to the mating press fasteners on the face seal. Ensure the elastic straps are routed around the headband. For comfort and security, the quick release headband can be adjusted each time prior to entering the work environment. Modify the headband size using the headband adjuster. To tighten, press the ratchet adjuster and rotate clockwise. To loosen, press the ratchet adjuster and rotate counterclockwise. Once your respirator is adjusted to your own personal fit, donning your respirator is quick and easy. Before using your respirator, check the FR face seal is inserted into the face shield correctly. For general use, the face seal should always be checked for damage and replaced if required. Donning the respirator. Switch the unit on using the on-off button on the side of the respirator. To ensure the unit is working correctly, check the LED status indicator is showing green. Firmly close the shield by pulling the tab on the face seal to lower the visor. Then ensure the face seal is pulled under the chin and is not twisted or folded. Modify the headband size using the headband adjuster. Doffing the respirator. Before taking the respirator off, Loosen the quick-release headband by pressing the ratchet button and simultaneously rotating the ratchet counterclockwise. Pull the face seal away from the chin to allow easy removal of the respirator, and then remove the respirator. Press the on-off switch to switch the respirator off. If special decontamination procedures are required, take appropriate precautions and place the respirator in a suitable sealed container. Otherwise, clean the respirator as described later in this video. Prior to fitting and or using the auto darkening filter, you should ensure that the outer cover lens and inner cover lens are fitted correctly. This provides protection for the electronic darkening filter from welding spatter. Prior to using the ADF, please remove the lens cover and ensure the battery is inserted as shown. Firstly, press the button marked Grind on the outside of the welding face shield. The internal LED will flash yellow every five seconds to indicate the filter is in grind mode. This will enable the user to grind the workpiece without the ADF operating. To return to welding mode, press the Grind button again. The LED will cease flashing. The filter will now operate automatically and darken when the sensors react to the arc light from the welding torch. The wearer can choose the shade number according to the actual welding environment by adjusting the external shade dial. The filter will exit grind mode automatically when it has been under grind for more than 30 minutes. There are three adjustment controls inside the helmet on the ADF lens. These are the shade selector, sensitivity, and delay. The shade selector allows the user to select a shade range of either 4 to 8 or 8 to 12. By adjusting the external shade dial, the shade level can be selected within these ranges. Due to the varying welding types and current intensity, the wearer should choose a shade that allows them to see the arc clearly and is comfortable to the eyes. The sensitivity control dial is used to adjust the sensitivity of the filter to different light levels in various welding processes. It may be necessary to adjust the ADF sensitivity to accommodate different light conditions. The lens delay control is used to adjust the time for the lens to switch to the clear state after welding. The delay is particularly useful in eliminating bright after rays present in higher amperage applications where the molten puddle remains bright momentarily after welding. Delay adjusting has two settings, slow, 0.5 seconds, and fast, 0.2 seconds. If the LED flashes red every five seconds, then the battery power is low. To continue using the filter, the batteries must be replaced. To replace the battery, 
Carefully remove the battery cover. Replace the battery with a new one, observing correct orientation. Carefully inspect your auto darkening welding filter on a regular basis. Cracked, pitted, or scratched filter glass or cover lenses reduce vision and will seriously impair protection. Worn parts should be replaced immediately to avoid injury to the eyes. To replace the face seal, first detach the elastic straps from the brow pad and remove from the visor frame on both the left and right side. Remove by pulling the rubber seal out of the channel. Then, to fit the new face seal, ensure that the pull tab is on the outside of the face seal. And then, starting at the very top of the face shield frame channel at one side, firmly press the ribbed edge strip fully into the channel until you reach the end of the channel at the other side. Finish by reattaching the press fasteners on each side of the frame to secure the elastic straps around the headband. To install a new headband, First, remove the old headband. Start by disengaging the rear two clips. Then lift the headband up and disengage the front two clips. Fit the new band by reattaching the four clips into the frame. When the status indicator LED illuminates red, further investigation is required regarding the condition of the filter and or the battery. If no fault is found on the battery, the HEPA filter must be replaced. Open the filter cover by releasing the latches on both sides of the respirator. Remove the filter cover by pressing the two filter latches. Remove the contaminated HEPA filter and pre-filter as applicable and dispose of the used filter responsibly. Be sure not to allow any dirt or elements which may obstruct the airflow to enter the air inlet whilst replacing the filter. Insert the HEPA filter correctly into the filter cover housing with the filter label facing upwards. Refit the filter cover into its original position on the respirator. Replacing the brow pad. To assist with changing the brow pad, it may be necessary to remove the headband. To remove the brow pad, undo the four press fasteners holding the brow pad to the headband frame. Place the new brow pad onto the headband frame. Fold around the headband frame and secure with the four press fasteners. Ensure the smooth side of the brow pad is facing the user's skin and the press fasteners are facing outwards. Replacing the crown pad. To assist with changing the crown pad, it may be necessary to remove the headband. Detach the press fasteners from the crown comfort pad and remove from the headband. Wrap the new crown pad around the crown section of headband and secure the press fasteners. Ensure the perforated side of the crown pad is facing the user's skin. Nape pad. Detach the press fasteners from the nape comfort pad and remove from the headband. Retain nape pad if this is not being replaced. Place the new nape pad, if being replaced, onto the headband adjuster and wrap the new nape comfort pad around the headband adjuster and secure the press fasteners. Ensure the perforated side of the nape pad is facing the user's skin.
The respirator should be cleaned after every use. Remove the respirator from the user's head before cleaning. Warning: Never use pressurized air on any part of the respirator. Before cleaning, remove the headband assembly, HEPA filter with cover, along with a rechargeable battery. Insert the provided cleaning plugs as shown for the air outlet, air inlet, and battery cavity. Do not turn the respirator upside down and fill any area or cavity with liquids. For respirators with contamination, ensure that the face shield is down and respirator is upright. Clean using a clean cloth with a mild solution of a household liquid soap and water. For ingrained dirt on the outside of the respirator, excluding visor, a nail brush or ultrasonic brush may be used. Dry the respirator with a clean, lint-free cloth. Do not use a heat source. Do not immerse in water. Do not use solvents. Wipe the inside and outside of the respirator. Pure wipe cleaning wipes are recommended for this purpose. Do not immerse the respirator in water or any fluid. Do not use organic solvents or abrasive cleaning agents on any part of the respirator. Disposal and cleaning of parts should be undertaken in accordance with local health and safety and environmental regulations. If the respirator has been used in an area that has caused it to become contaminated, with a substance requiring special decontamination procedures, observe the precautions described in the manufacturer's health and safety information. With proper use and care, this next-generation respiratory system will enhance workplace performance with protection you can count on.